When I was about 27 or 28, a lot of my friends started to get married. With that came a few bachelor parties and one of these bachelor parties for one of the like uh, least debaucherous guys I have ever been friends with. There's a group of us, we, we grew up making music together and a guy from this group was getting married. So we wanted to give him a proper celebration. And all of these guys in this group of friends are fairly like respectful. You know, they're on the up and up as far as, they're, they're not very debaucherous folks. You know, I'm sure we all have our moments, but that's, that's just not really the vibe of these guys. We all decided to go to Atlantic City. I don't drink and I don't gamble. But Atlantic City is a fun place nonetheless. I, I, it is a place I enjoy. It's just a kind of, it's, it's a classic destination. There's just something, there's just something very authentic about it. So even though, like I said, the groom-to-be is one of the least debaucherous guys I ever known, at some point in the natural progression of any bachelor party, the group decides... We have to go to a strip club. And to be honest, I wasn't really that psyched on the idea. Like, I wasn't kicking and screaming, but I wasn't really looking forward to, like, you know, being in a club with these guys and kind of, you know, I'm the one that doesn't drink. And also, I'm kind of like the more uh, knucklehead out of the group, in a sense, like, you know. I'm the one that could throw down out of that group of friends. So I'm not really psyched. Like if we go out and there's any kind of static in these places. And the thing about the club is it's not on the main strip of the boardwalk with all casinos. It's like a block outside of that. And you're thinking, oh, a block. What's a block? There is a major, major difference. <laughs> you know, you go a block away from the casinos. Not saying they don't have this at the casinos, but you go a block away and there's there's crackhead street walkers, crime, and and just you know it, it's really a impoverished uh, neighborhood, and, and you get like all the vices are walking around and all the crimes that come with those vices. So we go there. <laughs> we go to this club over there uh, because that's where it is. And we get to the door, and, you know, they're charging a cover charge, and I don't plan on staying that long, so I don't feel like paying a cover charge. So I just tell one of our friends, hey, here's the money for the cover charge. I'm not paying. Give it to him. Give it to the guy getting married, and, uh, you know, he could tip the girls with it. And I'm just going to hang outside, smoke some cigarettes. I'll be good. I think one other guy out of the group was like, yeah, I'm not going in either. He threw him the same money, and uh, me and him are chilling outside. And now outside of this club is a whole different scene. Uh, you know, it's all dudes. And it's not like the nicest... Uh, it, it, it's not like, you know, your friendliest, cleanest bunch of folks. You know, we're there for a couple minutes, getting some conversation with some dude that entered himself in a conversation and uh you know he shortly goes on to inform me how yeah he could tell we're new yorkers but we in south jersey now and this is his town and it's like you know it's like some uh kind of grimy south jersey white boy he was like a little bit of a clown but he, he was a little grimy and um you know the group of friends i'm with they're not like the most rough and tumble guys and that's just not the vibe that I was really trying to have that night either. So I just said, listen, man. Just trying to have a good time here, bro. Ain't nobody trying to run your town or nothing like that, bro. Just passing through. Just trying to make sure my friend has a nice night. That's all. And um, that was that. He goes on his way. And I turn around. Now there's another dude. And uh, he's not with these guys. But he had the same like kind of abrasive manner. He wasn't saying anything disrespectful. And he wasn't doing anything disrespectful. But it was a weird energy. It was like, um, 
it was just it was abrasive and friendly at the same time. I think he asked me for a light. I gave him a light. He might ask me for a cigarette, whatever. But I think it was probably just a light. I I don't think it was a cigarette because that's a whole other story. If um you know back then for me if somebody comes up to you like yo let me get a cigarette. That's like kind of a bigger issue. I don't think my pride would have let that happen, which sounds silly, just the way I the way I uh, came up or whatever, you know. It's just a little different. Anyway, so I think it was a light, and I give him a light, and he's like, "Yo, what's that owl tattoo? Or why you got an owl tattoo? Or yo, I like that owl tattoo." You know, I might have went on to inform him that it was not an owl tattoo. That it was a Tibetan skull tattoo. Or I just let it slide and said, thanks. Me and this guy get to talk and he's kind of lingering. I'm with my boy still. This guy's kind of lingering. And he's like interacting a little bit. I could tell he had like a funky energy. But I could tell he wasn't a bad dude. He looked a little crazy and dangerous. You know, he looked like he could be a problem. But there was something about him that seemed to to want some kind of human interaction, you know? And there was something I was able to pick up on that, even though I was kind of like not the most introspective uh, at at that point in my life. I think I still, I picked up on that. And and so I I talked to this dude a little bit and, and, you know, he tells me he just came back from the war. I think he's living, staying with his grandmother. He's got really nothing and nobody to come back to. And he's been kind of camped up in this strip club for the past three days. Uh, you know, blowing his money. And, you know, something about that really, really hit me, you know. That, like, man, this guy's just lonely and, like, you know, he's blowing all of this money that he made uh, while he was in the service. At this place, just trying to like find some companionship, even though it's not true companionship. And he knows that. He's not stupid. He wasn't a chump. You know, he was just basically taking what he could get. And um, I could tell this dude had some pain in him, you know? And for some reason, I told him that. I told him, like, man, I, I could see the pain in you, bro. And. I'm sorry you had to go over there. And I know you saw some horrible stuff that nobody should have to see. And I'm sorry that you did, man. You know, and uh, that hit him. You know, that hit him. That hit him. He was moved by that, and I meant it. I wasn't I wasn't saying that to, you know. There was nothing about that that wasn't sincere when I spoke that to him. I don't even know where that came from. You know, I really generally... Don't get that deep uh, with somebody outside in the street. Um, But it was just one of those moments. I guess we were winding down or something. You know, starting to to make our way out of there. Or or at least that vibe was that it was coming to a close. Or maybe he was going back inside to something. But he looked at me. He's like, yo, there's something different about you, man. Like, what's different about you from, from, from other people I've been meeting? And I don't know, without missing a beat, I was like, I don't want anything from you, man. And he was, yo, it hit him too. And he's like, wow, that's it. That's what it is. You know, like we had an interaction. It was not a transactional interaction. It was a sincere interaction. Um, Even though like it could have easily went the other way. Like this guy was kind of abrasive. If I had been in a different mood that night, or if, if if anything was a little different, we could have ended up, you know, uh, getting into it with each other. But, like, I don't know. We were meant to meet at that moment the way we met. As I'm about to walk away, and this conversation's coming to an end, it hits me. I look at this guy in his face, man. Now, he's like a light-skinned black dude. I'm Italian American. Um, but it hits me. We look the same. Our, our features, our facial features, our general uh, 
size and, and, and body type, our noses, our eyes, our eye color even, uh, lips, we look the same. It hits me. And I look at him like dead in his face and I'm like, yo, we look the same. And he says, I know. As if it's something he realized that whole time we were talking, even though he was out there on whatever trip he was on, he said, I know. As if, like, he didn't need me to tell him that. As if I'm the one that just figured that out, and he knew the whole time. And, man, you know, that that really tripped me up, man. And I'll never, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that dude's face. Um... You know, they say everyone you meet is a different version of you. And in this case, this version of me happened to even look like me. And that that's just a story that always touched me, even, even as I tell it now. Like it kind of, I'm kind of getting goosebumps.